Hello anybody, this is Blender Pretender again here, uh, playing Blender and posting it on the internet just for the heck of it. Um, this, this, I'm going to continue with the modeling of the bicycle. That's the uh, last video, that would be the fifth video in the playlist that I'm creating for this bicycle. Uh, I created the, the, uh, seat, you know, and the, uh, and you know, the hardware that mounts it there. So, first videos, of course, I did the frame the handlebars, the fork, and this beautiful basket over here. Um, but of course that's not a bicycle without the wheels. And so now I have to uh, have to generate the wheels. A couple of things that I have to point out is that I did not ensure that these were at the same level. I'm When I fixed the photo in the background, the very first video, I took some time to explain how I was doing that. I tried to make the bottom of the wheels level down here. And so the assumption would be that these are also level. They may not be. And the reason I bring that up right now is because when I do the, I'm gonna dedicate the time to the rear wheel, but when I do the rear wheel, I'm gonna try to take some care, or at least maybe spend some time trying to make it in such a way that I can then take that wheel and bring it, copy it to the front and then get rid of the portion that um, has the chain. Uh, that's the bigger challenge back here for the rear wheel is that it has to have the chain and when you look at the front picture here let me go to the wireframe uh, probably not that clear either but uh, let me just hide them so I can see everything one of the things that is very obvious is uh, to me this is the uh, braking system here um, might be just a disc simple as a disc because I don't have that many photos to show how this all works but uh, the wheel is centered about the forks the fork the forks and <laughs> the fork and but then you can see the spokes on this side of the wheel are a little longer right here versus here and so the wheel itself I'm not even sure if the term would be correct but the wheel itself looks like it's eccentric <laughs> well not eccentric off the center but in this axis it's somewhat eccentric and um, I'm going to uh, try to get the reference photos that show some of the back, but I'm going to assume that it's got the same kind of condition, or maybe uh, the spokes are not sticking out so much in the back there. Um, I do have some other photos that I'll go through just to just try to get an idea, but that may prevent me, or or not necessarily prevent me, but it might make it difficult for just for me to just copy one wheel and bring it over because I'd have to make room for this device here. So, with that said, those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be thinking while I'm modeling this. Of course, I go through the time lapse and sometimes, you know, I do take breaks in between, but, uh, you know, you see me zooming in back and doing and then undoing, doing and undoing things. And that's why that is. And then, of course, there's always the usual extra work mistakes, you know, that, uh, that go with everything else. So with that said, I'm going to go now into the time lapse and see how, um, how I can work this out.
Okay, so I'm going to interject here a little bit, and uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that I it's been a while since I recorded the spokes and the center of the wheel here, the uh, axle. Um, and for anybody that's been watching the other videos where I've been modeling this bicycle, it's been about a week and a half probably since I did this uh, this object right here. And um, and so that's the beginning of this video. And I had to take a break, I had things to do, but um, the reason I'm going to interject is because it's very obvious in the first portion of this time lapse that there's a lot of trial and error that's happening. And that's because I made a mistake right up front when I measured the spokes. In the beginning of the video, I go with a grease pencil and I number, uh, I thought I numbered all the spokes and I measured them and I counted them correctly. Turns out that, uh, you know, and so I counted 35, but that doesn't work because it's not an even number and it's not, uh, you know, you can't have the even number or the even count on both sides of that axle. So I went for the 36, so that created a couple problems for me right off the bat, is that uh, I cannot make, I was thinking about using the vertices which I copied off of this, off of this uh, wheel axle, that would have been these vertices, use them to create the holes in which, um, a lot more geometry of course, anybody who's watching this would understand, but it will create the holes in which the spokes go into, but I'm not going to do that because they're not going to match up. And I'm not going to change this one because unless in the rendering this looks very odd, in other words, I'm just going to let them run right into that surface. And I took the time to try to make this spoke come and look like it's bending around there. Um, and the hole itself, it's, it, unless it's an image that's taken this close, you can see that where you can see, you know, you would see the sharp edge, none of the, um, I guess you would call them, um, you know, edges like you would see this edges around here, right, um, would show through. So then it becomes very obvious that it's just a CG. Um, but um, also, so there's that. I'm just going to uh, continue with this one having 35 divisions, which doesn't even have to... For the case of the way I'm going to leave it, it doesn't even have to have the 35 divisions uh, in the circle. The circular, you know, divisions, it, it basically only needs probably 8, 10 at most, something like that. Um, okay, so there's that. And um, and then the spokes, there was a lot of trial and, error, j trial and error just to try to get them to look like they conform around this edge here. And... Um, and then go to the center. The problem, though, a <laughs> big problem, is that I was thinking of just running them into whatever circle I was going to add. And let me just snap the cursor there to the center of that. So I can, since I'm talking over this right now, I'm going to add a circle. And where is it? Okay, rotate on the X, nope, on the Y, rotate on the Y, the 90, okay, and then let's make it to have 36 divisions, and go, oh, I can't do that here, okay, because I have to be in the edit mode, I suppose, tab, so let's add another circle then, when I say we, I mean me, okay, what did I do? Okay, it's there. Let me just delete everything again. Add a circle with the 36 divisions, 36 vertices rather. And here I can rotate it. Hmm. It was on the Y. Okay, so I'm going to have to guess to make the wheel something like that. And I'm going to have to make these spokes come and coincide with these vertices. Um, they don't right now. And that's because I probably, the way that I see about fixing that is to rot the rotation angle that I used. I took them and I rotated them to try to follow how it shows here. And I rotated them 60 degrees. I'm probably going to have to do a little trial and error to try to figure out what rotation needs to happen, for example. I'm going to rotate these vertices right now just to coincide with a couple of these, but these do not. Um, 
And if I were to scale, let me see, scale these almost to where that point is right there. They will coincide, right? But that's because um, because that's their natural length that I rotated. So any smaller the way I see it, I'm going to have, which is that the wheel, I would say the wheel is about this big. And of course, so that's, let's say that's the wheel. I'm going to extrude in the Y, sorry, in the X, like that. Oh, let's go negative with the normals reversed already. So I can start adding the modifier, but um, W flip the normals, or actually the normals were right, I think, in that case. We'll figure it out. Um, let me see. Yep, yep, shouldn't have done that. There. The normals are right because this, this one then, E, X, and then make sure that we have, that I have the center there, scale. So that's going to start building the wheel, the wheel, um, let's go back, control three. So that's going to start building the, the shape of the wheel, but I can't just run these in there. It's not very clean. This one's off. It's actually very close just by looking at it right now. Mm, probably not even worth. Not even worth messing with it. See, this vertices is on this side of the spoke, this one's on the other side, and so on. They're close, but they're not there. Visually, I could probably get away with it, which is what my plan was originally, just to let these spokes run in here and hide, <laughs> and then you don't see them, and then they look equidistant equidistance, like they have an equidistance between here and here. And I could probably, I could probably get away with that. Who's gonna know, right? Me. <laughs> so, um, for the same, the video already is about, it's probably gonna be half an hour long as it is right now. So I'm wondering, maybe I should just let it go right now, finish the video for the wheel, but like I said, this is just me knowing that it's not going to be. Uh, I'm going to go back and fix it so that they are equidistant at that radius, at the radius here. And the only way that I can imagine to do that, I mean, I can do that several ways. I can go back and selectively, you know, alternatively select some of the spokes and rotate them some more, which I would have to then, um, once I select them, rotate about the center, I'd have to make sure that I select, for example, let me see, let me see if that works. Alt H. Let's get rid of the normals here. And all this stuff, by the way, I've said it jokingly before, it's extra credit, right? It's like when we were um, younger in high school or whatever, it was like, um, didn't do your work initially correctly, and so then you ran to the teacher to get extra credit. Uh, just so that you can make up and get a mediocre grade, the normal grade. So. Well, okay, I guess it needs to work a certain way. This, this management of all this stuff so you can actually work is what's important, I think, is what Blender offers. It's awesome, I think, what Blender offers this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna hide those vertices. I'm gonna work with this side only for now. So I'm gonna go see, select all these vertices that I can see through there. This is the wireframe mode that I have on, but then I'll just go Control L link these, control I, the reverse, and then hide it. Um, control three to get back. Yeah, and so because I've stopped the video, see that's the time, that's what I forget when I stop the video. Um, I always forget to get these keys back on. So start the display again. My mistake, always. Uh, okay, so what I need what I need is a miracle. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, okay, what I need is something that's a reference with the vertices. So I'm gonna duplicate that one. P selection. And so I basically separated that selection. Tab out. That selection there, I'm going to join it to this one. Control join. Oops, did it do it? So that one to this one. Control 
join must have hit something different so back to the side view control 3 and in this case I should have a vertices that corresponds to everything they've been adjusted slightly they should still be you know on let's say correct intervals on the radius they've been adjusted slightly because of the modifier here so for example I'm going to take these this let me zoom out so I don't have to move so much this 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 yeah I know this <laughs> that's funny this and this and this so if I took those mm -hmm, then it's still not gonna work <laughs> it's still not gonna work <laughs> I've already defeated my thought my thought I'm looking for all of these vertices to see that they are on the right side they are on this side of the spoke this one is not is this the wrong this is the wrong one did I miss I did I missed this and this it happens there's so many spokes so many things going around so what I have is it's all on the right side excuse me I'm gonna pause for a second Okay, so back from that little pause, uh, let's see, let's get it back to the, the side view. So what I'm going to have to do is rotate them, um, but they're going to rotate about the center. And so um, mm -mm, that means that I'm going to see an angle here. Now I'm going to also go to, to this, um, basically bringing down that view, uh, you know, I, what would you call it subdivision back to zero so that uh, I can see more closely what's going to happen but so what's happening is that it's going to rotate about the center and it's going to put a kink that's not the one this one here so for example this one is going to put a kink there or wherever oh this one doesn't have it um, yeah the ones on the other side have that um, loop cut for the sake of getting a, you know having an angle there with uh, you know because they're on different sides of the plate that uh, on the axle that holds them but the other ones don't but you still have that loop cut there and so what I'm going to do be seeing is a little kink right there because they're going to uh, rotate about the center um, that may be imperceptible so I'm just gonna do that for now rotate I don't think I have to put the proportional edit to move that so I'm going to just rotate it and shift right to the center that's in the center that looks good 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 enough for that, that one, and if there was a rotation here, there is, and it's not that there was, there is a rotation here. It's imperceptible. Okay, now the other one. What I'm going to do is the other ones, rather. Shift Alt, get rid of that, and then C, get rid of all these. So now I have the other ones that need to rotate the other way, but these, a kink here may not be so unnoticed. So I'm going to rotate it with the proportional editing. So I'm going to put the proportional editing, make sure it is linear. And so I'm just going to try it right now. It's kind of far away to eyeball it. But as I grow the circle, there, I can see just barely as I scroll up and down. There, that that has influence. 
a linear influence it actually has an influence on the other ones too on everything else everything else everything counts in large amounts as well as as well as the ones that are my target these circles that are my target I'm sorry this point that is my target so for that I'm gonna have to I'm gonna use the grease pencil say that's my target control link control link and hide that right now probably just as easy to go around and choose these Oops. that one so it's every other one hopefully I don't get it wrong every other one I'm going to see how it looks right now with it. I'm thinking maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. Let's see how it looks. It's also imperceptible if I just do it like that without the proportional editing. So for that case, I'm just going to zoom in and rotate it. Since I'm eyeballing that, is perfectly fine. That Actually, the edge on the wheel itself is showing me. Now here I can see it, but once I go here and Alt A, oh, 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 that starts the player. I have no idea where I am on the player. Let me see. No. Okay. So now Alt H, everything. I'm tabbing out, and I'm in the in the uh, what do you call it the. Uh, smooth mode and everything. All the resolution is up for the subdivision. And I think that's what I'm going to do to the other ones too. Rather than rework the wire, because the other option I was thinking is to rework the wire the way I did multiple times. And that's it's long enough. The video is long enough. So let me save that for now. I have to do the same thing for the other side now. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and finish this wheel. <laughs> the wheel here, and then just call that good, because it looks like... Uh, i got to get rid of that grease pencil so it doesn't mess me up. It looks like... Let me see. I'm just going to go Control-3. Start adding that uh, modifier there. And then go smooth. Um, I'm looking at this right now just to see. I know that in the time lapse it looks like I move around a lot, but that's because I want to see how it's starting to look. And tab in there. Okay, I also need to add the uh, mirror modifier, which is here. And I'm trying to remember which is. <laughs> let me go. Is it this one? No. The other thing that may not be that apparent in the in the um, time lapse is that I keep going between layers and I just use the keys, you know. So for example, that one right there should still have the modifier. So the mirror is ahead on top of the subdivision modifier. So so when and when the, the time lapse is being recorded. I'll, you know, hit the number, and unless it's seen over here, right, the viewer may not know that I've gone from layer, uh, from layer to layer, and I do that to separate certain things. For example, this one has already been applied, the modifier has been applied, so before doing that, what I do is I make a copy, I just move it to another layer, which is in the tenth layer, and then I make a copy. So it's like, I'll do a shift duplicate, escape, and then move. In this case, I'm moving it to layer 2, and here's layer 2. And it still has the modifier, but then I just go ahead and apply the modifier, that kind of stuff. So, and then I can mess with this one, work with it. Um, and then it's kind of like a fork, right? That 
it's not very easily apparent in the time lapse. But anyway, that one has a mirror modifier, and you need to put it up on the stack. And I'm going to put clipping and this mirroring on the X, which is fine. And here I'm going to put that one in optimal display. So I know that three divisions, three divisions is high. <laughs> as long as the computer can handle it, I'm going to continue. So, okay, I should be able to see that one too. What's going on? So, okay, it's mirroring God knows where because I have a center. Where is it? Nope. Because the center of it, no, it should be mirroring. It's got the center right there. Okay. So it's mirroring on the X. Oh, so it should be mirroring what on the... Nope, it should be correct on the X, Y, Z. It's mirroring on the Z. The Z makes it work, but I'm not sure why. Um, for this for this wheel. There must be a rotation on the object that I'm not uh, familiar with. So what I'm going to do is with that one off so I don't get confused, I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. Now turn it back on there. So there was a rotation to it. Maybe when, oh that's probably, yes, because the object when I originally made it, I put a rotation to it. That can always be observed up here too, when it's in object mode. And I put a rotation to it, so that's why it was the Z axis tab. Okay, so let's get that one right there and bevel it slightly so that it starts looking more like that. Let's go back to the center. Um, go control three because we can do a scale shift. That's the x-axis. So scale shift x-x. Maybe a little bit out more. And then we gotta get this one to clip. We gotta get this one to, is it that? What's going on? Mm. looks to me like it's separated. Something's going on here. What am I seeing that's... Okay. I'm seeing some... Okay, tab. I know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that circle right there. And it's confusing me. So get rid of that one. So I just jumped objects, right? Which is really that one over there, scale shift X. Going out a little bit. So it starts to look a little bit like what we see there in the photo. So control three, the, the side view. Go to the Z. At least here, it looks like it's got, I'm not gonna worry too much to duplicate that exactly, but it looks like it has, it's like faceted you know, flat edges, so it's a curve, it's got some flat edges. That's fine. I think what I've got now is fine. It looks like that has the structural requirements that it needs. I'm going to put another loop in there anyways. Control X, Control Z. I didn't want it there. Let me get rid of the normals display because it's bugging me. There. And then just grab, grab. That's a GG there. Now I'm going to scale that one. Scale, Shift, X. A little bit up. So now it looks like... Um, oh, very apparent, obvious problem there, here, is that I still haven't done the other ones. The other... I'll time-lapse those. So probably I'll do that right now. I'll time lapse the adjustment of these over here. And that's um, kind of like an error because I got rid of my my circle that I was using for reference. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into the time lapse right now and fix the other spokes. 
and then also make them go to the center. Okay, so the the one thing that's very obvious here, and I didn't get in the time lapse. I stopped it already, and then I realized is that it's not uh, they're not centered. But I can still fix that a little bit with this frame showing here. I'm going to actually that can work with those still that are there. I get an idea. Control three. No, I'm sorry. Control one. I can get an idea where they have to be by just moving them here. I'm going to put the period so I can use the cursor and um, just move them on the X. Um, I may, you know what, I'm going to cancel that. Move in even more. I'm going to make sure I have the snaps off because at this point I could be snapping to anything. and. I'm going to eyeball this one as well to be in line with that and go into the wireframe mode. Again, there's my cursor here and then just grabbing it, moving it with the shift down. I'm going to eyeball that very center point right there. Back into the shaded mode. I can see that they are in the center. The distance that it traveled the supposed exact distance that it traveled there. I say supposed because um, just in dealing with some of the, the scripts that I have written where Blender, where using, you know, we use Python. Let me copy that first before I go into a, a tangent in what I'm talking about. It, you learn quickly that uh, those are approximations um, because. Uh, because of the way Blender does the math, or is it either Blender or Python, one of the two does the math, the approximations are are based on uh, the fractions I get. Anything right of the zero is based on a number divis divided by two. That's also in their wiki page. So, and so the closest approximation they can get uh, doing that process. And then that number obviously is has been truncated you can actually go on further but what we see there is limited and when you use Python to get the value XYZ values you will find that there's more to it but um, but yes you always have to count on to the last digits being rounded because of that what I just mentioned okay so let me unhide the other ones I'm going to control uh, no I don't have to link them all just make sure that they are going to the wireframe so I can see it. They are unselected because then when I, um, it's Alt H, right? When I unhide, now I'm going to let's shift link that one and that one. Now I can hide Shift H, hide this one, Control One. I mean, isolate this one. And here I can just use the circle select and deselect all the ones in between. And I mean in the uh, hub. Going back to the shaded mode, I can see how close. This is very misleading sometimes. I see that. And that's because of the matte cap, I think. Because I already checked, the, I have already checked the normals. And the normals look right so this is looks odd I guess because it's the back side of the surface of the face so here we go and really here's put the cursor on here I have all these selected 
Now I can just drag it a little bit on the x-axis and then go negative control V to paste it. Boom. It should be the same value that I again with the with whatever rounding error there is in that should be the same value coming over this way. So those are very minor errors. They might be within the threshold of the merge vertices in some cases and uh, some of the videos that I was working on, particularly the hand the uh, handlebar was it the handlebar? I can't remember now. But uh, one of those, I uh, had some vertices where I m would move them just lightly and they would merge. Because I had this button on. And it's within the merge threshold. And I think that can be fixed in the user preference. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't messed with it. Okay, so I think there, all the spokes seem to go to the center. And it's starting to look like a wheel now after so many iterations of messing with those spokes. I'm going to leave the spokes protruding in. What can be done to make these look even better is, let me go back to the um, to the um, uh, subdivided view there, uh, but uh, what can be made to look even better is adding what would be, let me go control 3 so it can be seen in the photo here, wireframe. You can barely be seen, but what you see there is these, they're uh, I forgot what they are, but they're basically nuts. The spokes come in and they're threaded, and then these get turned slightly uh, for when the wheel is off balance. So there's a way to balance these. They get turned very slightly. And these are just like uh, on the other end of the frame are like little rivets, I guess. They they're, they're just, they have a flange that holds them in. And so the spoke goes through and it gets... So what I can do is model one of those separate and then just copy it on a circle. And they should copy in well that's and then then I would have to pay attention because for example any one that I make for this would be equivalent for this one but not for the others and so there'd be four there would be a variety that I'd have to make um, total of four one two three four five total of five no four total of four different varieties that I have to make I'm not gonna do it because I didn't do this so tough luck. So there it is. Now to just to finish the wheel and put an end on this, put an end cap on this video because it's already long. What I'm going to do is just do the rest of the wheel and go back to the wheel and then extrude it. Scale. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll just grab it. I gotta make sure I have the global because I was moving right now without paying attention. Right now I just did not pay attention. The pit, so that's just giving the frame, the appearance of the frame being, um, you know, the, the frame having some sort of thickness, because I'm not going to give this thickness. So extrude again, bring in a little bit, and then scale shift X in just a little bit. And what I was getting at before I cut myself off is that um, it's always sometimes good to go back and see this on subdivided mode um, that's because you know sometimes when we're working with a divided mode uh, we'll move things around and they're actually superimposed or tucked in under each other and so that is done purposely sometimes but other times it's better just to it's not necessary so it's better to keep it cleaner so back to the con control 3 extrude it again and then just scale shift X Oops, I did shift Y. Scale, shift X. No, I did shift it. I did it correct. It just look, it probably just looks odd for some reason right now. <laughs> now I, <laughs> this is an awesome, awesome, awesome looking thing now. Oh, wow. Maybe I'm going to, let me see. Uh, I have to undo, obviously, the scales and the shifts that I just did because I was working off of the uh, the cursor. So that is very that I do that a lot, and the time lapse is not visible. But yeah, <laughs> this looks funny. I'm going to yeah. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I should tab. Say maybe I should. Uh, oh, excuse me. I have to take a pause. Yeah, so I had to take a little break there, but ultimately, uh, I was going to save it as. But you can see here, 
I did, I was going off of the, uh, off of the cursor, which is this right here. So I really should be off the medium point. Let me tab into that again and then undo. I have to undo all the way back to, well, maybe I can see it from here. Control Z, Z. No, even this one they went control Z. Even that extrude. That one just moved in the X, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So it's the control comma also that makes that the center point for all these things. Okay, so it's extrude. Yeah, and that's why I like to do, because I can zoom in, that's why I like to do, for example, go period, and then you're moving here. But somebody's watching this, is like, ah, they're laughing. They're having a laugh. And then extrude again. Move it again in the X. But then control comma, scale, shift X. That should be the shaded, smooth mode, subdivided mode. For some reason, it doesn't look the same. Let me get that one. Scale shift X to go higher. It was looking all right right now. I don't know why it's now not. <laughs> Control zero. Let's see. What's happening here? Let me see. It is still. Um, I hope I'm not making a mess. Mm, it ain't working. So something's going on. It's not working. I wonder what I've done. It is in the object mode. And this, so here's a zero, but it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to pause it for a second. I'm going to just restart it just in case I did something. Okay, so what I did is I reloaded the startup file and then reloaded this one again. And it seems to work. Um, control three, control zero. Um, I've had experiences where in Blender, if you run certain scripts, they seem to throw certain things off. And um, I didn't run a script right now, so that was odd. But uh, I'm trying to, well, maybe I should just tab in and continue so I can finish this. So I was trying to rotate around that. That doesn't look very good. So control comma, scale, shift X. The same here. Okay, that's looking better. I'm going to take that one with the period, hitting the period. And I'm just going to move these closer. So now it looks kind of thin, but not that thin. So it's got the edge. So now, control comma. that much a little bit let me save again so what I was getting at is that's you know kind of odd I guess with the period selected now I'm going to move or I just depress the period right to change this without having to come and use the the mouse or in my case it's the pen go back and forth it seems to be working there control 3 now I need to be able to make sure that I'm keeping more or less the proportions of the bicycle and because I don't have the frame showing but obviously I need to fit the wheel within the frame um, the wheel 
materials are going to separate, or the materials, uh, uh, what I assign as materials is what's going to, you know, make it very obvious, whether it's uh, rubber or steel. And this, I'm just going to eyeball the roundness. And again, I still have, i uh, just go all the way. I still have the the uh, the preview there for the subdivided uh, preview. So scale shift X. I'm just eyeballing the roundness of the wheel of the tire. This is the tire. It looks like it's got to look like it's an inflated tire. So I'm going to shift Alt, select these, come back to the period, and move these out a little bit. Control minus. Oh, and it doesn't work that way, huh? That's fine. There. Now, that should be the wheel right there. It looks a little fatter, I think, than Control Three, than the pic. Oh, come on, Control Three, than the picture. The picture shows it a little thinner, proportionally. The the frame looks more or less, not quite. I can see it here. I can appreciate it more here. So it's probably what, like 15% more in thickness. I can always start start taking things. To, um, you know, one. Let me see. Z tab. So for example, take that one. Control plus. I can see it from here. Control plus, 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 plus. Now this is going to start also making. Uh, I got to be careful here because I don't want to start giving it distortions like I did previously. Scale shift X. Oh, maybe I should just go to the view here in the wireframe mode. Ah, uh, come on. Scale shift X. Okay. Let me. Oh, I thought I had the tab on. A little bit right there so around there just eyeballing it from here to here it's got to be close it is close um, this is where the two circles intersect that's why I'm going for that okay control plus again scale shift X no I just want to get it close to the wheel the, the tire, I mean. Tab. Okay, now it looks more proportionally like what it is. The, it looks like a fat tire, or like a fat frame in a tire. So one of the things I might need to do is to bring these in. When I mean these, I mean these. <laughs> Let me see, I'll go with that one. Control plus, plus. Go to the wireframe mode. Control one, because I lost every so often. I just lose the reference there. Control plus one more, and then Shift Alt, Control Z. Get rid of that one. So these have to go in. Not really. I think it's also this one. That's, so using the period, I can bring that in a little bit. Control minus, bring these in a little bit. That one's a little too far out. See how that looks? So is this one now. Okay, that looks better. Okay. Now I'm gonna get rid of... I'm going to get rid of these. They're very helpful to see where your, you know, your geometry is and all that stuff. But I'm going to call that one good for this video. Control three, and um, very unfortunate. This is very. This looks very bland, very lame. It doesn't. It doesn't give its surface to. <laughs> in the uh, in the in the thumbnail for the video that I am going to. Oh, what am I doing? I went into the vertex paints. I do that often, and uh, it's N. So. When I do the thumbnail for the video, right, it's just 
but uh, you know, some people might see this like, ah, it's, that's, that's no big deal. And then some people might have a rehearsed video where they show how to do something like this real easy. But I think that's what I'm going to put for the thumbnail, just for doing this wheel. I'm going to leave it at that because it's already long enough. But um, now the next step, next step is to copy this forward. I need to do the chain. That's another one of those that will be very interesting. And I need to do the um, all the other stuff that goes with it. But I think I'm going to separate it into smaller videos, just doing a little itty bitty thing at a time. The pedals themselves as well, all, another thing. So uh, for anybody that's watched this long, thank you for watching. Um, that's going to complete the wheel, right? <laughs> at least I'm... Um, uh, keeping true to what I just said. And I'm going to save this here as the thumbnail for the video. Thanks for watching. See you next video. Bye.